are having a good evening. I'm just out here living. So I saw my friend, um, what's her name on here? Gosh, I can't remember. Anyway, she makes videos about being on MAT. And a bunch of people have just been like really, really just saying horrible things to her. And then another one of my friends told me that people have been saying horrible things to her because she's on, on, on MAT. And I kind of wanted to talk about that and tell you guys that, you know, a lot of people are going to judge you for being on Suboxone or Methadone. But you know what? They don't have to live your life. You know, they don't have to live your life. So what they say, it doesn't fucking matter. You know, it doesn't matter. I used to really get so upset when people would talk about me and talk about my sobriety. But I've learned over time, people, they just be talking shit on the internet. They don't care. They don't do their research. They literally just believe whatever they hear. And so if... A person is stupid enough to just believe whatever they hear and not do their research, then I don't fuck with them. You know, um, it is not hard to do your own damn research, you know. But here in the days of the internet, people just don't do that. So if people are judging you for being on subs, fuck them. Okay, those are not good people. Okay, a good person isn't going to judge you for taking a medication that's saving your life from the disease of addiction. And you don't need that person in your life. Okay, it could be your toxic family member that's doing it. It could be your husband or wife that's doing it. I get so many people that reach out to me and tell me that their husbands and wives are doing it. Oh, that makes me so mad. You know, um... You have to do what's best for you. Exactly, Ray of Sunshine. Exactly. And you just say, you do what's best for you and fuck what anybody else believes, you know? Fuck what anybody else thinks. Last time I checked, uh, Billy Bob Jean and uh, motherfucking Jan and fucking Karen and fucking Ken, uh, they're not going to come to my house and take care of my son if I croak, if I overdose and die. You know, so if they have an opinion on my sobriety, this is why I tell them. Write it. <laughs> you know? Write it. So, you know, and then, you know, on the other side of that, it's just par for the course when you have a social media following people are going to have opinions on you. And so you just got to be ready to take it to take it. It's it's hard too. Believe me. When I first started out, it used to bother me. It used to hurt my feelings, you know, when people would say bad things about me or tell lies about me. Now, I'm just like myself up <laughs> yeah <laughs> fuck them fuck them fuck them fuck them um now let me just make this completely clear it took me a long time to get to that point where i say fuck them okay i used to it used to hurt me so bad i would get so emotional and it would bother me it would bother me to my core now i don't give a fuck <laughs> And I think a lot of the reason why I don't is because um, I've been fucked over by the recovery community so many times um, that I learned the hard way, you know? I learned the hard way. So, it is what it is. I'm doing good, David. What about you? Hey, Nate, I'm going to lower this TV, okay? Because you're not watching it anyway. Um. But it's not, like, learning how to be not affected by people's opinions of you is an art form. Okay? <laughs> and also, it can change. You know what I mean? It can change. Like, you can be not caring one day, and then the next day, 
it can really hurt your feelings, you know, and that's okay too. That's okay too. You just got to keep remembering where you came from and remember that that person, they don't, they don't dictate your life. And as long as you, as long as you are doing the right thing and staying on the right path and staying sober, that's all that matters. You know? Um... Uh, today, earlier we had a live, and some of you guys were asking me, was it hard for me to get sober at first? And it was. It was. Um, that's why I got on M18, because it helped me. It saved my life, you know? Uh, if I hadn't have gone on there, on M18, I probably wouldn't be alive today. So, I love, you know, being able to share that with you guys. Oh, hey, Tim. What's up, baby? Hey, David. I'm proud of you. I think that, um, you know, eventually we all find what works for us, and it takes a minute sometimes. And when we, but when we do finally find out, find what works best for us, and we can start doubling down on, on that and doing that medication assisted treatment. Mel, you know what MAT is. You've been, I know, I know you. You've been a follower of mine for a long time. Yeah, and so listen to me. Let me share you an inspirational story, David, that I think will help you. Okay. So when I first started sharing my story. So, I hit one year sober July of 2016, okay? And I'll never forget it. I went to my sponsor, and I said, Hey, sponsor, I really want to share my story um, with other people and help other people. My sponsor knew I was on Suboxone, and she said, You got one year sober. I think that's a great idea, okay? So, she said, Why don't you call the treatment center that you graduated from? And ask them if you can go back and share your story. So I did. They said, sure, we would love to have you. So I went and shared my story at the treatment center, and it was amazing. And that really inspired me, right? At the end of my story, I was crying. Everybody in the room was crying. It was just really awesome. And so I was like, okay, I want to do this. Like, I want to help people. And I had already started, I had, I had signed on to Facebook and made an account, but I hadn't really said anything. I had just been watching all these Facebook recovery advocates, right? It's like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. I want to tell my story um, like these people are doing and helping all these people on Facebook. Wow, this is freaking amazing, right? And I'll never forget it. I was networking and talking to a bunch of people in a bunch of different Facebook groups and a group asked me to come share my story, okay? And I was like, yes, this is my chance to, to do it, you know? So I went and I told my story and, you know, towards the end of my story, I was getting to the part where I got on Suboxone and I shared that and then I wrapped up my story and then next thing I know, I was kicked out of the group and blocked <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, what happened? Why did I get blocked? Oh, I know why I got blocked. They messaged me and said that I had no, I, no business telling my story because I was still in active addiction I might as well be shooting heroin if I'm on Suboxone. And I was devastated. I was devastated and heartbroken. And so I was like, I'm never going to make, I'm never going to go on social media ever again. You know, I was so mad. And so I signed off. I deleted my Facebook account. I said, fuck out of here, you know? Well, I was lonely. I was new in recovery. I had just gotten custody of my son back and I was struggling. I needed support from other like-minded people. So I decided, you know what, Nicole, make a, make a Facebook account. So I create, I mean a YouTube account. So I created my YouTube account. It was 2017 and I just let it sit there. And then 2018 rolled around and I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a video. I'm going to talk to people. 
And so I did. And I built my YouTube channel over a five year period. And it was literally my whole, my community. It was my family. They helped me through some of the hardest times in my life. In 2020, when the pandemic hit, my husband had relapsed. They helped me through that. They helped me through my own struggles where I was triggered. I got to help other people through their struggles. Like this was my family, you know? And we built it all the way up to 25,000 people on that channel. It was amazing. I would interview people in recovery. I would um, do meetings like once a week. I mean, once a day for seven days a week. Like it was popping, y'all, popping. But I never thought that I would have anything more than just my YouTube channel, you know? Well, then I met my boss in 2019 and he was like, you should start your Facebook back and you should start an Instagram and you need to come on to TikTok. This is like 2019, the middle of the year. I was like, man, I ain't getting on TikTok. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. That's for, that's, that's for, for kids, you know? He's like, no, really, you need to come to TikTok. And I was like, okay, fine. Well, the rest is history. You know, they used my videos from my YouTube channel in MAT programs. They would literally give their MAT um, new patients my YouTube channel link and say, hey, this is a great place where you can get support. If, and, you know, for people that are newly sober on MAT, people told me I would never be able to help anybody because I was on MAT. People told me nobody would ever take me seriously. I wouldn't be able to work in recovery because I was on MAT. And guess what? I have done all of the above. All of the above. So if you're getting discouraged because people are talking crazy to you because you're on Suboxone or you're on Methadone, you can do anything a regular person in recovery can do. You are a regular person in recovery. You can get your counseling degree. You can get your peer support specialist degree. You can be a recovery coach. You can do anything you want to do. Taking a medication once a day to help you stay sober has nothing to do with addiction. Okay, like that's your medication. As long as you're taking your medication as prescribed, baby, you're sober as a fucking judge. And I want to fucking tell you something right now. Send, to, send them to me if they say otherwise. Okay, so I've been advocating for MAT since the beginning of motherfucking time. Okay, I was talking about being on subs before it was cool to be on MAT. Y'all, okay, I was like, oh, I was like in the dinosaur ages of being on Suboxone and people looking down on you. Right now, here on TikTok, you guys have so much support. You guys are so freaking fortunate. You have no idea. I also want to shout out a really awesome program. If you guys are like, well, Nicole, I'm on MAT and I really want to be able to have like a community, like meetings, groups, get into Mara. M. A-R-A, -A, Medication Assisted Recovery Anonymous, okay? Go online, type in Mara, marainternational.org, okay? And it'll pull up their website. They have meetings every day on Zoom, and they probably have a meeting in real life in your state. So it is amazing. Mara supports harm reduction. They support plant medicine, and, of course, <laughs> they're literally you know, a MAT program, a MAT, um, a MAT recovery group, a MAT recovery group. And it is amazing. It is amazing. Whenever, um, in 2020, when my husband relapsed, I started doing Mara meetings on my YouTube channel. Oh, I take Suboxone. Um, I started doing Mara meetings on my YouTube channel and I would do one every single night through the whole pandemic. So, if people are trying to discourage you about your mat journey, fuck those people. You don't need them in your life. Anybody who's not cheering you on and encouraging you and and to do something that's helping save your life, you don't need those kind of people around you. Okay? You need people who are going to encourage you and cheer you on and 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 support you in your betterment of your life. I want to share about Angel, you know, Melissa's daughter that passed away. 
Angel had gotten on Suboxone, and I truly believe, y'all, that somebody was giving her a hard time about being on it because she got off of it. And I believe if she had still been on Suboxone, she would still be here today alive with us. And it, it infuriates me. It infuriates me that people in early recovery who are on subs or methadone have to worry about being judged by people who are been sober for years. You know, if you've been sober for years and you're looking down on a newcomer because their recovery doesn't look like yours, you are sick. You are sick and you need help. Okay? Because people are literally dying and you're too busy looking down your nose at somebody because their recovery doesn't look exactly like yours. What kind of damn sense does that make? What kind of damn sense does that make? It don't make no sense. So, anyways, I love you guys. I just wanted to come on here and tell you guys that if people are giving you a hard time about being on Suboxone or Methadone, you let them know that you send them over here to me and I'll talk to them. I'll handle it for you. Okay? Hey, Tara. Thanks, baby. But this is my beautiful nails. They're like a glittery top coat. And, yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys that's my public service announcement for the night. Now I'm going to lay down. Not going to make no more live streams. I'm going to go rest and relax with my husband and my son. Okay? All right. Love you guys.